Hello, peoples. This is Friday. And I'm finally going to get to the tires, although it's overcast. I've left my tires sitting out here for a couple of hours. Reality is that the tires are only 72 degrees. They're still going to be really hard to take off. Really should bake them to about 100 before you take them off, but I can't wait another day to do this. I've planned to go to the cemeteries tomorrow to do a video, and I need the bike for that. So I'm going to make an attempt to take the tires off, even though they're, they feel pretty cold. I'll see what I can do. Anyway, first thing I'm doing, real quick, is to make sure that I get the majority of the dirt off, because I don't want that getting caught in the bead. I know there's a hundred videos out on how to do this, but I figured if you guys like my e-bike stuff so much, why not do a couple of videos while I'm doing the work? So, just using the rag. And I was gonna get my pressure washer out for this, but I don't really have the time. I also don't have a lot of water in my tank. I used up a lot of water this week doing dishes. And I find it easier to hang the wheel up like this. See how dirty this is. Yeah, I'm actually getting some of the soapy water on my new paint job, which it needs it badly. That's all this is, is just some soapy water. Okay, you want to make sure you get as much air out of the tire as possible, so I've already pressed, basically pressed down with the valve open. I'll try to get a little bit more air out of here. You want to get the tire as completely flat as possible, otherwise you're not going to be able to get the rubber off. These wheels, these tires, are three inches wide, so they're, and they're heavy sidewalls, so they're extremely difficult to take off. Compared to my old tires, which came right off, these ones are really tough. So you can see it's got a big flat, couple big flat spots in it now. That means it uh, doesn't have any air in it, or very little air in it. And just find this crease like this. So try to flatten it out. And I'm trying to pull back some of the rim. Looks like I got a spot here. It's okay, so I'm trying to pull it back until I can see some of the goo. It's gonna to take too long if I record all this. I'll show you once I get the bead started. So after struggling for 15 to 20 minutes, what you gotta do is once the air is out, you have to you basically just use strength to pull the tire away from the rim. And you gotta get it, enough of it to the point where you can get a lever tool. And I finally got one on this side. Well, I did. Basically it gets to the point where you can fit one of these in and then you can finally pull it over the side and then you use this little hook, hook it onto the spoke. Now these plastic ones I bought aftermarket because uh, now that I think about it, I kind of like it better than these metal ones. These metal ones, they do work but I'm afraid they, they're gonna scratch the rim. They are metal, or these plastic ones won't scratch the rim. And for the record, this is my brand new KMC chain. It's designed for a 10-speed system e-bike. So this is an actual electric bike chain. See, X10E actually means for electric bikes. Heavy duty, high power e-riveting. I haven't installed this yet because my OEM chain that came with the bike, the super cheap chain, uh, has been holding up just fine. Uh, it did break once at the RTR last year. I fixed it. It's been fine ever since. I've just been carrying this around in case that chain would break in the middle of nowhere. I have this and a couple of extra links that I carry with me, uh, quick links, so I can throw a chain back on and keep going. Basically, I just throw that old chain away if it ever breaks because the master link and it's gone. So it's, once it breaks, I'd have to, you know, use pliers and try to get all back together. But I'm actually considering putting this on. That old chain's been doing just fine. I've had it on there since I bought the bike like a year and a half ago. And I tried to put a new chain on when I was in Idaho and that thing broke three times within the first 20 feet. 
and I ended up just throwing that chain away. I couldn't even return it for a refund because it was uh, imported from Germany. And that's one of the bad things about, you know, once it's past the Amazon 30-day return and you got to deal with overseas shipping, uh, $50 chain, what, what's the point, right? I have to go through the RMA process, yada, yada, pay out of my pocket for shipping. And it's like, no, nah, I just... I just I just ate it as a bad decision. I took the chain off the website, off the uh, Hobo Tech website, so no one else would buy it. So the point is to try to get two of these in place, and then you can kind of peel the tire back. And this rubber is so difficult to work with. And, you know, it's only 70 degrees. It's making it even harder. It's a beautiful day. I mean, this is, this is like a perfect day to be outside because there's no sun to like beat on you, you know? Okay, of course, the second I turn off the camera, the second lever goes right in, so. Yeah, see, so you just go back and forth. See, it doesn't have a hook on it, so it kind of makes it more difficult, but I'm at the point now where the tire's coming right off. Okay, so at this point, I probably don't even need the tools. Yeah, at this point, you can pull the lever tool out and it comes right off. And it's funny, I'll just lift this up. You guys can see that it's still very liquid in there but it just stops sealing after a certain period of time. So I'm gonna go dump this. And what I'm gonna do is you see this, this is uh, what they call Stan's rim tape. And it doesn't do a very good job of, of securing the rim. So I'm gonna take this off. This is the factory red vinyl thing that I think is for tubes. I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna clean everything and I'm gonna use monster tape, one inch wide monster tape. Because that's what I used on the back wheel. It seems to, uh, seal the spokes a lot better. I just gotta get the dang things off and get the valve, new valve stems in and retape them and put the brand new uh, sealant in, which is race sealant, it's extra thick. So hopefully that will solve any of my problems I have with the spokes leaking. Okay. Yeah, this is the part with the old valve. This has been such a pain. These are so poorly made. There's no, there's no O-ring, there's no seal. Um, there's no seal at all. And that's been a part of the problem. I figured the Stans brand stuff is the best. I mean, they make the tape, they make the tube list, they make the valve stems. But I found that the tape sucks the valves then suck, and their base model sealant sucks. So it's like, why is everybody recommending this stuff? It's, it's really not that good. I mean, well, I didn't even make it a year. These valve stems are shot. I mean, I have them so tight to try to prevent the leak that they actually pull, the rubber part pulls through the rim. And, you know, that's, that's, the end of the, that's the end of the valve stem. And that's kind of like what happened in these cases. They're so loose. This, this front tire isn't so bad, but the back tire is really loose. But you can see all this sealant on here. That's all on there because it was leaking so bad. So, yeah, these valve stems suck. I got better ones that have a much bigger seal at the bottom, and it comes with an O-ring with a, 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 a nut that seals it in there. So it should be should be much better than what I've been dealing with with these. Because next I gotta clean this. I gotta clean all the old crap off. Then I gotta tape it. So I'm gonna rinse this off so I can get as much of the sealant off as I can. Okay, so what I'm just doing is with a wet rag, I am taking off all the old sealant inside here that was behind the tape and that's on the side of the rim. It's important that the inside of these rims are is clean so that when you put the new tire on, it will seal. 
and I'm cleaning the middle of this really, really well because it's going to get new tape. I'm just going to do one last quick wipe down the middle. I'm let this dry for a couple of minutes because this rag is wet. I don't want it to be wet at all when I put the tape on. I'm going to go get the new stems, grab a Mountain Dew. Actually, I should go dry that tire out right now before I do anything else. Got my one inch wide Gorilla Tape. This is what I used on the other wheel and it worked really well. It's really sticky, it's thick, it's waterproof. And that's what you want to make a sealant. See, all these holes go to the spokes, so you obviously need to seal them up. So how you do this, you find where the valve stem's gonna come through. Start at, you know, about three inches before the hole. Because you're gonna wrap all the way around and then three inches past. So that way you have a triple layer where you're gonna put the valve stem through. And for, this, for these rims, the inch wide tape is just perfect. It's like it was made for this task. Much better than that stands shit. You know, I found out about this on YouTube. I actually watched YouTube videos on how to do the tubeless conversion. Everyone's like, use duct tape. <laughs> and I just happened to find that Gorilla Tape makes this perfect one inch wide and it's, it just seats perfectly in here because it's, it's cloth backed. So it's flexible, very sticky. Okay, so the valve stem holes here are gonna go up to about there. Got two rolls of this just in case I needed to do it a second time or something. But stuff goes on really easy. So I just do a little do a little massage. Body massage. Is the body massage machine gone? Uh what the hell? Body massage. G.I. Joe! Just massage the, uh, I want to make sure that it's sealing down in the crack and that it's sealing on the sides here. So I just make sure I give it a nice press on both sides. Here we are up to the valve stem. What I usually do is I start with a razor and make a little tiny cross hatch and then I use a Phillips screwdriver to make a round hole, because you don't really want to overdo this. Okay, I just did a little slice. That'll be enough to guide the Phillips screw, Phillips screwdriver through. But these are the new valve stems. You can see the screwdriver is actually smaller, so I'm not going to make a hole that's any bigger than that. This will be nice to actually have the O-ring on the top. It's so important. I tried to, at my dad's, I tried to actually do this. I tried to find, oh, he had these O-rings, but they were just the wrong size. And I said, you know, I bet you I can just probably buy new ones that have this O-ring in it. See, I'm actually screwing it through. I'm not pushing it through, I'm not forcing it through. I'm using the tape. That should be a really good seal. And then you got this rubber on the back that's, cone shaped that will seal the tape where it comes through. You know, it would be nice if they invented a tool to actually twist these nuts instead of using a pair of pliers, which I hate doing because it's, you know, it kind of feels like you're stripping it out. I'm just gonna kind of leave it there. If I need to tighten it more, I will, but it's indenting now. I can tell it's the, uh, the, the rubber part this gasket is flattened. That's it for that step. Now the fun part, getting the tire back on. Okay, here's something you need to pay attention to because I've screwed this up a couple of times before. Almost all tires are directional, which means a tread pattern is designed to give you traction in one direction and not the other. Uh, on my tire, you're not gonna be able to see this on the camera, but right after it says Wilderness Trail Bikes Tread Design, it says rotation and it has an arrow pointing that way. Now the disc on this is facing away from me, which means this is gonna be the way the, tire, the wheel rotates. So we gotta make sure that arrow lines up with this so that, you know, whenever we're going forward, we're getting the most traction. So now the fun part. 
generally we have to do the opposite of how we put it on, which would be to put the put one side on first. Okay. That's all I need to do. I just need to keep that in there. So that I can get this around. Just go a couple inches at a time. Ah, you cock bastard. Now the fun part is we have to try to pump this up fast enough to get it to seal around the edges. And then I need to take the valve stem out and put the race sealant in. Most of you know how to remove a Schrader valve with the little, I can put it against my glove so you can see it. It's got a little, little hook in there basically and you twist it and you take the valve stem out. Now on the Presta valves, you use this tool, you see it against this, my glove, that top hole is oval. You actually use the oval part of the tool right there and you lock it. You see how that goes and it actually and you unscrew it. Once it's loose, you can just take it out with your hand. And there's the, the valve stem. Now this is completely open, and now I can put my racing sealant in there, and I'll show you how I do that. So this is the stuff I'm using. It stands no tubes race sealant. It says virtually eliminates flats. Now this is uh, extreme conditions. 14 years in development for the most demanding. This is the racing version of their stuff. This was like $35 for this, really expensive. So I hope it's gonna work. The instructions on the back tell you what to do. Uh, shake the bottle, uh, invert it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use it's like a giant syringe. I'm just basically I put the the stuff in here, then I attach this to the valve stem, and I just plunge it into the tire. And this allows you to measure accurately how much sealant you're putting in, because they recommend three or four ounces. But I'm gonna be, I usually put twice that amount in there, just to make sure it's you know my tires are pretty big, so I want to make sure they seal. Yeah, this was like ten bucks or something, but I'm telling you, it's worth it because you know, allows me to put the juice in there. And because this stuff is so thick and it does have little things in the liquid that settle very quickly to the bottom, you gotta make sure you shake it every time you do this because it does say do the bottle upside down. And that's obviously because they want all that stuff that's floating in there to get into the tire. So I'm just gonna shake it and then quickly Oh, I'm getting it all over the tires. Okay, so this will be four ounces. Sounds like it's going into me. Grab this rag real quick. This stuff, once it dries, is nasty. It's, it's really nasty to get off. So. Okay, so let's do two more. I don't need to record this. You guys see how it's done. Now the valve stem goes back in. Make sure there's absolutely no dirt on this. I put this up on my tape so that I wouldn't have to be concerned getting any dirt in that little valve because it'll stop working. And use your, use your tightener. So it's hand tight. There you go. Now I can just pump that up. Let's pump this baby up to 40. Now you missed it because the battery died, but I already pumped up the tire once to 40 to seat the sides, because you have to seat the tire before you put the liquid in, otherwise the liquid will leak out. So now that the, now that the rim is sealed to the tire, now I can pump it up with the juice in there and then roll it around. I'll, I'll bounce it and I'll roll it around and that should initially seal it. Really you gotta ride it over a bunch of bumps and stuff to really get all the spokes to seal, but it'll be good enough for um, overnight. I just noticed how uh, white my legs are. Uh, it sounds like I need to get some sun. 
wish there was some sun today. I could do the other tire. So all you do now is do this a whole bunch of times. At, at my dad's house, I actually had a crossbow bolt. Let me see if I can use a screwdriver. Basically, spin this sucker around. I like to keep one side low like that because I do have a lot of fluid in there. So it should be sealing it up no problem. Bounce it while you rotate it and that will slosh it up into the spokes and seal it. Now what I think I'll do just to see how well it seals is I will take my soapy water, put a little extra soap in it. We'll spray around it and we'll see if we get any leaks. Again, I don't expect this to be perfect until I ride it. I noticed a lot of times when I first do it, uh, when I first put the seal in, put, first put the tire on, it'll leak slightly until I ride it. And I ride it a couple of miles. That seems to finalize the spokes because it usually will leak in the spokes. But let's check and we'll start with the valve stem. I'd be really surprised if I make it all the way around this and I don't see any leaks, because that would be amazing. Of course, the real test is to wait a couple days. If it doesn't go flat, you're, you're good. But this is good, it's good so far. Guess what, guys? Not a single leak. I don't know if I've ever had that happen before. I, I have to say that the stands racing stuff Seals much better than it, than the regular stuff. The regular stuff's like 20 bucks a quart. This is like 35 a quart. And you only need, for a normal tire, you need four ounces, which that lets you do two tires four times. Wow, all right, well, I'm impressed. I'm gonna make sure there's no sand or anything in this bearing. All right, well, that was very successful for once, so. Hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. This is my first ride since fixing the tires and look what I got. I was like wondering what that noise was. I got a big ass thorn. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin. Joe Lazaro, Pat.